Welcome back everyone, Mindy here with you today and I have another Magic Picture Changer card for you from Lawn Fawn. This time I'm combining the Rain and Shine and Get Well Before and After stamp sets to create my magic changing scene. Now I'm actually going to start my card off this time by creating the background first. And the first thing that I wanted to do was add some clouds. Now, uh, depending how you arrange your card in the end will determine how much of the clouds you see. But I really thought this just added a little bit of something to the background. And I'm using a mini cloud stencil from My Favorite Things. And I'm just applying some Tumble Glass Distress Oxide ink with my life-changing brush. Just giving it a really nice light brushing of it, not going on too hard. Because as you can see, the Tumble Glass really does pop off the card. So I go through and I do about three layers of clouds and I know that I'm going to have grass towards the bottom so I'm not too worried about how far down it needs to go. And I just turn my stencils so all the clouds will be different. Next I'm going to use the straight flower border to die cut some flowers out and this is going to be cut from some cilantro cardstock. So what I'll do is I have my magnetic sheet here that I use for, Gem for my Gemini Junior. I just lay that cut side up, place my cardstock on top, and I'll run that through my machine. And you can see I have plenty of room down at the bottom so I can determine how high I need that to go later on. Next, I'm going to take these trees. This is from the Park Shadow Box add-on. I'm die cutting that from some paper bag cardstock. So this is going to be going in my background as well. And then I also need to cut the tree tops. So I'll die cut those from some cilantro cardstock. I'm using the same sheet that I did for the flowers. I'm just going on the other side of the cardstock. So I have these two ready to go. And I'm just kind of going through and getting all of my die cutting out of the way right now since it is just kind of a lot of scene building. And this is the Magic Picture Changer add-on. So I'm creating my frame and I'm using the Really Rainbow Scallops and this is actually a green color. I'm holding this in place with some post-it tape because I want to make sure it is lined up straight since there is a pattern on there. I wanted to make sure that that pattern was die cut straight. What I didn't watch out for was the notch that typically goes where the slider is and you'll see that in just a moment. So I did go ahead off screen and cut some of the flowers. There's the little flowers here. I did sunflower cardstock, mermaid, guava, and sugar plum. So I'm going to have those ready when I'm ready to glue. So I'm going to start off by getting my tree, chop, tree tops glued down. I'm just using a tape runner to attach those to the top corner of the card. This card base is cut to three and three quarters by five inches. And those tree tops fit very nicely in the corners and then using the liquid glue and some tweezers I'm adding in the tree tree trunks I apparently can't say these words very well and I know that there's some room there down there at the bottom so I will end up trimming this down to fit but what I'm starting off with is gluing the backs of my flowers I don't need a lot because a lot of it's going to get covered up but I glued the yellow in the back and then I could have a colored flower on top so that the yellow is going to be the center and that's showing through. And then just going through and attaching these with the liquid glue. Like I said, I don't need a lot of them because I'm covering most of it up, but just in case I wanted to have that variety there of the colored flowers. You could see adding that sunflower to the back and then a few more tulips. So off screen, I did go ahead and kind of trim off some of that grass a little bit so it wasn't too high up. And then I can go ahead and attach this to the front of my card. And I just used a tape runner for the bottom and then some liquid glue for the flowers. And I will end up trimming off the edge there so it's all flush. Just give that a little snip. And then I attach this piece to some white cardstock. And that white cardstock is going to measure four by five and a quarter that just gives it a nice white border 
and then the white cardstock does get attached to some mermaid cardstock. So there is a lot of layering here, but I think it really worked out well. And this could be a scene all on its own. Like I said, a lot of it's getting covered up with the pe uh, magic picture changer, but I just thought it added a little bit more something to the background. I thought it was just, I like creating the scenes that go with the picture changers. So now I could start putting my frame together and I'm just adding little bits of adhesive to the corners. This is the frame I cut from some cilantro cardstock and I added that to the top of that really rainbow scallops piece that I had done. So now our background is off on the side. We could start working on the actual picture changer part. I like to line up my main picture changer piece in my Misty and line up my images that way. Then I could see to make sure I'm actually getting in the frame and I don't have to worry about erasing any pencil lines. And I decided to do this cute little turtle that's upside down from the Get Well set. And I gave him some rain clouds. And now I'm doing similar to how I did that. I'm uh, lined up in my picture changer, my healthy turtle. And off screen, I did create some masks. So I just attached my mask and now I'm using this adorable little rainbow with the sun. And this is off the rain and shine stamp set. I thought that was just a really cute addition. And it all fit really well inside that picture changer window. So I masked my turtle so that he is in front, he or she is in front of the rainbow. What I'm not noticing right now because my Misty was turned is I actually stamped that kind of crooked. So you'll see here in a little bit what I mean. I did attach a mask to my rain clouds as well. And then I ink blended pumice stone and I'm adding weathered wood. The pumice stone wasn't as gloomy as I wanted it to be. So I came in with some of that weathered wood and that really did darken that up. You could also stamp the raindrops so that it looks like it's raining on him. But I was just kind of going for gloomy. And then I'm adding shabby shutters. So kind of a dull green. I mean, it's it's a pretty green, but it went really well with my gloomy background. So into our healthy and happy picture, I'm ink blending mowed lawn. So that's a really nice bright green. And then I will ink blend some of the tumbled glass around my rainbow. You could also very easily color in these backgrounds with Copic markers too. So once I have my backgrounds all ink blended, I'll go ahead and remove the masks from them. And that I like to put my masks on before I do any Copic coloring. So if I do, oops, I didn't waste all my time coloring. So now I have my images here that are set to color. And same thing for my gloomy picture. Just peeling back those masks. And then I get started on the Copic coloring. So since I did use the Lawn Fawn white cardstock and I had stamped these into the jet black ink, so it's Copic friendly, I'm starting with the turtle and I'm, or the unhappy turtle, and I used YG17, YG25, YG23, and YG21. And I know that sounds like a lot, but I really love this combination for my turtle. It has the YG17 is just a really nice green, a real nice kind of grass green to me. And then ending it with that YG21 is such a nice bright color. So it really gives some contrast to the turtle. And I did add a little bit of shading for the clouds, C4, C2, C1, and C0, just so they weren't so stark white against that gloomy background. My happy turtle in the next picture is going to be colored with the exact same colors that I used for my unhappy turtle. You can see I had forgotten to color my lines there, but I did come back in and remember. So see, look, I have a downhill turtle. That's what you get for stamping sideways. I'll make it work. I'm going for it. I already did my masking. I wasn't starting over. So like I said, I used the exact same colors that I had used in the first turtle. So I did it on this one. And for my rainbow, I didn't do any shading. I just added straight color to the rainbow. I kept that really simple. You could add some shading if you wanted to. And for my rainbow, I'm going to use R24 for the red, YR04 for my orange, Y17 for the yellow, 
YG25 for the green and BO2 for the blue. So just straight coloring, nothing fancy. And for the sun, I did come back in and use that same yellow and orange that I had in the rainbow. No shading there either, just straight color. And now I could start working on die cutting. So I lined up my picture changer window for my images. You could see this one I tilted to make it work. Held those down with some purple tape and ran those through the die cutting machine. And then I'm taking my anti-static powder tool and just brushing that powder all over these front and back of my picture changer pieces. And I like, like to use a brush. I think that kind of spreads it out a little bit more. Then I come in and I'm just folding in those side folds. It's just a real skinny strip. So just kind of crease those, fold them over. And I like to go over them with the bone folder to make sure they're just a really nice crisp fold. And then adding in some of the 1 8 inch score tape from Lawn Fawn. And you'll put this on both sides of that strip that you just folded. So just going over both of those. And then what I like to do is I'm just going to remove the backing of that adhesive for the inside. That's going to be our track. And I like to close my track up right away and have it ready. So giving everything a really nice good push. So like I said, see, I'm going to remove that backing, get those folded over right away. That's our track and then folding that closed, and then we're gonna start putting this together. So I'm just slipping that picture changer in, and I'm gonna start sliding the front piece back into that second piece. So you can see I'm just kind of folding that back behind that inside piece, and then giving it a couple good pulls, make sure that it is working properly, you can come back in, add some more of that anti-static powder tool to make sure everything runs smoothly. So once I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and remove the backing from that inside track, making sure that my picture changer is lined up straight and then I can close this shut. And one thing I found that has really helped me is I kind of, uh, from the bottom, kind of pop that up a little bit. You can see it's a little snug, so I'll just kind of pop that up a little bit and that seemed to really help. It's almost like you're letting air back in there. I don't know. It was just, it really helped kind of pop that a little bit. And then I can attach my frame to the front. So I'm adding adhesive just into the corners and then a line of adhesive on those short sides. That way nothing catches. And you can see here, I don't have the notch cut on the right side and it just kind of dawned on me here, but it works, it happens. You know, my picture changer still works fine. <laughs> so you'll have that. Now I'm going to work on my sentiment and I'm using some mermaid cardstock that I prepped with an anti-static powder tool. I'm stamping a sentiment from the Get Well Before and After stamp set and it just says, hope you're back on your feet again soon. So I stamp that in the Lawn Fawn Clear Ink and then I'll sprinkle on the white embossing powder. And once I tap off the excess, I'll go ahead and heat that up with my heat tool. And I really like how the white kind of pops off of the mermaid cardstock. Then I'll use the Everyday Sentiments banner to die cut this out, which it fits perfectly. I also die cut that pull tab from the mermaid cardstock and I'm adding this 1 8 of an inch score tape, which fit really well between some of these uh, areas. So I just used that to attach it and I'll go ahead and add that to the top of my handle there. And I'm one of those people, I had to take that little itty bitty piece out of the P and add that to my tab. Yep, I'm that person. So I just used my tweezers and some liquid glue to add that for a complete look that is totally optional. Now I did go ahead and added two layers of foam tape behind my magic picture changer. And I'll just line that up straight and add that onto my card front. And so I really like this kind of park or forest scene that is created for my cute little turtle. And like I said, even just that background alone would have been great to add a sentiment or just a straight image to. I just really like how that went well with my picture changer. And so giving that a couple pulls and everything runs smoothly and it's great. I'm so happy with how it turned out. 
I hope you enjoyed today's inspiration and some additional masking that I had to do for that. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and would like to see more videos from me. Thank you for stopping by and I'll see you next time.